We're here at the Navy Yard in Brooklyn at the NASA Deep Food and Beyond uh, food event uh, for different companies that are developing foods that can be consumed in deep space, produced in deep space. Um, there's a lot of technicalities involved with this, um, but it, the further that we send astronauts out into space, uh, the food is going to degrade, so we need to be able to produce food out there. Um, so there's a lot of really innovative companies in there that have figured out incredible ways of producing food uh, for our astronauts out in space. And a lot of it is mycelial. Um, so we're here to check it out. We're here to network, communicate with people, and provide them any consultation needs. You know your boy got that knowledge, so let's go spread it. This is a um, Martian Recolite uh, binded with our uh, biomass of Fusarium. Uh, it's really quite impossible to break. It supports more than 100 kilos. So the idea is to really bring the habitat. No glue, all mycelium. The moon and Mars. I got the moon in my hand. Uh, but uh, bind it with the mycelium. In, in Mars it's easier because there's a lot of CO2 that we can turn into uh, acetate and the fungi can eat that acetate. Yeah, just like they eat the acetate in the cigarette butts. Yeah. And the fungi can eat that acetate. Yeah, just like they eat the acetate in the cigarette butts. Yeah. And the fungi can eat that acetate. Yeah, just like they eat the acetate in the cigarette butts. Yeah. All right, so we have a Fusarium burger and Fusarium cheese. It's probably really hot, but let's give it a shot. Okay. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. There you go. Thank you. Multitasking by your reactor is deactivated, so that means that you're, you're basically taking it or eliminating the RNA, otherwise, it wouldn't be safe to eat. So, basically, this is it. The 3D printed little net egg ball, that thing is awesome. So it's like, and then you have, we have to think about, because all of this is working with the gravity environment, but in space it's going to be so much fun. That would be a good thing as well. I'm the first person that speaks English that has this in my hand, and it was a, that was the case, so I was just like, alright, God bless, thank you, I'm a It's like, there's no way, like, that just like, it fell on my lap, and I was just like, okay, like, I'm gonna go. Like, there was, there was no question. What you need to synthesize your DNA, it's, it, it's helping you to, with the energy because it costs so much energy for your body to produce these molecular compounds like ATP. It's one of the most energy intensive molecules that we need in all of our cells all the time. So the fact that cordyceps has the 2 deoxyadenosine the adenosine and guanosine, it just provides you with energy on a cellular level, so it's more relatable to your body than caffeine, which is like an exterior compound coming in and stimulating you in a way, in that way. This is like going in and helping you so you don't have to synthesize compounds your body would already be synthesizing. And then the cortisepin is like almost exactly like adenosine triphosphate molecular structure. So it can go into our cells and provide similar functions. Uh, so like energy boosting, apoptosis inducing, like booty shaking, <laughs> all over. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's aphrodisiac, they call it like Himalayan Viagra.